Hello YouTube and welcome to the 3D Printing Canada Ender 5 Plus build video. When Creality calls this the Ender 5 Plus, they really mean it. The Plus has a large build volume and it's an equally large printer. And that isn't a bad thing. It's built strong and very sturdy. Let's take a look at the contents of the box. It comes with an instruction manual, a highly pre-assembled electronics box and base plate, another highly prefabricated X and Y axis assembly, a heated bed assembly, a left and a right Z axis assembly, some supporting aluminum extrusion, a spool holder assembly, some test filament, and a box of goodies. Let's see what's in this box. We have a typical Creality toolkit that comes with wrenches, Allen keys, clippers, and some zip ties, a USB cable, an SD card with an SD card USB reader, some cable management hardware, a print removal tool, a power cable, then we have just one more bag of screws and accessories. We have some 30mm M5 screws, some 25mm M5 screws, a bag of spare parts including a nozzle and a pneumatic fitting, and finally we have a bag with four 10mm M3 screws. Also included is a Creality warranty card. We'll start the build process here by unwrapping our 2040 aluminum extrusions. Our first step will be screwing these extrusions into the base plate. I used the brown box for accessories to prop the base up to gain access to the holes from below. Our 2040 extrusions will get screwed into the holes in the bottom of the base. Be aware though that one side of the extrusion has a hole in it, and that hole has to be at the top of the printer. So orient it so that the hole is at the top of the extrusion. This will be the same for all four pieces of the aluminum extrusion. Take your time while doing this, make sure not to cross thread any screws, and double check with the manual to make sure you're using the right screw size. Repeat the same steps for the other three pieces of extrusion. Now it's time to attach the top of the printer onto the assembly that we just created. To ensure that we're orienting it correctly, orient it so that the front of the LCD screen is facing the same way as the front of the hot end assembly. Although the aluminum extrusion does self-square pretty well, you will have to move things just a little bit to get it to slide in properly. Again with this step, take your time and use very little pressure on the joints if possible. Once everything is relatively lined up, we can insert our screws from the top. To screw the top on, there are four screws total to insert vertically. After getting your vertical screws tightened, now we can insert our screws on the side of the top of the printer. This is why it was important to orient the aluminum extrusions properly in the first step. Just like the top four vertical screws, there are four screws that go in the top sides of the printer. Our next step is to assemble our Z axis. As we said before, there is a left and a right hand side, so orient the motor connector so that it's facing the back of the control box. You will see screw holes on the side of the top and bottom assemblies of the printer. Use these holes to attach either side of the Z-axis. Each Z-axis support will have two screw holes on the top and two screw holes on the bottom, so four screws in total. To make this step easy, Let's start by only screwing in the top screws of each side of the Z-axis. To gain access to the screw holes for the bottom of the Z-axis, we can use a piece of foam that came with the packaging and tilt the printer on its side. Then you will be able to screw the bottom four screws onto our two Z-axis supports. Now it's time to attach the bed. Let's start by moving either side of the Z-axis down evenly. You only need to move it down a couple inches. Grab the bed assembly, and with the cable facing the back of the printer, you can place it on the platform created between the two sides of the Z-axis. Use your four 10mm screws to secure the bed to the Z-axis. At this point, we can install the spool holder. Thread the T-nuts onto your bolts preemptively. Then using your Allen keys as a guide, slide the T-nuts into the extrusion and tighten. You should feel the T-nuts catch and it will hold the whole assembly in place. This might take a couple tries. It's time to start hooking up the cables. The Y-axis cable will plug into the Y-motor which has the shaft going all the way through it. 
and you need to connect the three-prong connector to the Y-axis limit switch off to the side. Connect the extruder stepper motor, which is right by the Y-axis stepper motor. It's labeled E on the wiring loom. And you can connect both Z-axis motors with the Z leads. The X-axis motor and limit switch are off to the side, so we can connect both of these as well. Take the hot end wiring loom and then plug the PTFE tube into the top of the pneumatic fitting from the extruder motor. Off to the side of the extruder, you can see a box and that's our filament runout sensor. You will see a large orange XT style connector. Connect that to the bed lead. The white wires coming from the bed lead are the bed thermistor wires, and these we can connect to the bed thermistor port. Make sure to check the label because we need to use the right port for this. Now that the bed is connected, we can move on to the hot end wiring loom. At this point, it's basically about matching up the correct colors to the correct wires. The hot end heater core wiring has two thick red wires. The part cooling fan wiring has one yellow and one blue wire. The heat sink cooling fan has one red and one black wire. Then the hot end thermistor has two white wires. Again, it looks just like the bed thermistor port, so make sure you check the labels. Finally, there's a nifty 5-pin port, and that's to power and get the signal from our BL Touch. At this point, the wiring is done. That wasn't so bad, was it? Let's do a little cable management here. Creality doesn't give us specific locations of where to attach what, but I thought it was best to attach the hot end wiring loom to the spool holder. I also constrained the wire for the filament runout sensor a bit. Finally, I cleaned up the wiring on the left-hand side using some zip ties. Again, you might have a better solution for this than me. Just make sure that the wires are not interfering with the mechanical parts. At this point, it's safe to unwrap our bed assembly. Careful with those scissors around the wires. Make sure you reinstall the clips holding the bed glass in place. Ensure that the voltage on the power supply is set to 115 volts. This is on the side of the control box. Now we can plug the printer in and let her rip. Now we have to start the process of calibrating the machine. For an initial calibration, look underneath the bed and make sure that the length of screw protruding from the bottom of the adjustment wheels is about the same on all four corners of the bed. The bed should also look pretty parallel with the bar of the bed mount. If it's not, adjust the wheels as needed. It's harder to see from this perspective, but now it's looking a lot more parallel. Now that we have the bed as level as we can preliminarily, let's continue by moving the head of the hot end into the middle of the bed assembly. Using your hands, very slowly and evenly, twist the bed surface up. Continue this until the hot end nozzle is about one millimeter from the top of the bed. Do this in a well-lit room so that you can see the reflection of the nozzle in the top of the glass surface. Slowly move the nozzle along the Z-axis to the left and see if the distance between the nozzle and the bed changes. Here, you can see the distance got smaller, so I am manually adjusting the left Z lead screw to bring the nozzle back to the one millimeter distance we started with. Repeat the same process moving the nozzle to the right-hand side. The right side has a little bit more of a gap, so I'm actually adjusting the right Z lead screw so that it's moving the bed up a little bit. Move the nozzle along the extent of the bed to see if things look uniform. This looks pretty good. Now we have to set our Z probe offset. Let's start by going to settings, then the leveling menu. The printer will auto home in the center of the bed. Put a piece of paper between the bed and the nozzle. Make sure that the nozzle is totally clean. In the leveling menu, press the Z minus button repeatedly and you'll see that the nozzle gets closer to the bed. Keep doing this until the nozzle grips the paper, not enough to stop it completely, but enough that it feels rough between the nozzle and the paper. Make slight adjustments as needed. After this process, press the Z Home button to save the settings. Now we can start preheating the printer. Go back in the menu, go to Temperatures, Manual, then let's set the bed temperature to 60 degrees, and we can set the nozzle temperature to 200 degrees. 
you can confirm on the main menu that the temperatures have been set. Let's let the printer get to temperature. Now let's go to settings, move, and then let's move the z-axis down about 60 millimeters. That blob is just from the test filament they put through the hot end. Load your spool of filament onto the spool holder, cut the end of your filament on a 45 degree angle, and then carefully route the filament through the filament runout sensor and into the bone tube. Pressing the extruder arm will make it easy to load the filament manually. Push the filament through until you start to see it come out at the hot end. At this point, you can load your G-code onto the SD card, insert it, and then go to print, and then print your file. Make sure to follow the link in our description for our guide on setting up your slicer properly to auto bed level. If successful, you will see the printer probing the bed as shown. The Ender 5 Plus is a well thought out addition to Creality's line of prosumer larger printers. It makes a lot of sense for a large printer to have a bed that only moves in the Z axis because a larger bed has so much mass. This will mean higher quality prints and less artifacts and ringing. This printer was a very fast build, and even with filming, it only took us an hour to assemble. We also have developed a direct drive kit for the printer, which can be seen in the links below. As always, from everyone at 3D Printing Canada, we hope you enjoyed this guide.